Hello everyone. So in the previous session we have seen how to determine the circular convolution by the help of concentric circle method which is also called as graphical method. So we have finished. In this session we will see how to determine the circular convolution by the help of matrix method. And I have already told you that the matrix method used for the linear convolution is completely different from the matrix method for the circular convolution. So we will be having a different approach for solving circular convolution by the help of matrix method. So before I start the session, let me tell you a few things that we need to know about the circular convolution. That is, if the length of x of n is L and the length of h of n is M, then the length of the circularly convoluted result y of n will always be maximum of l comma n so as we have four number of samples in x of n and we have four number of samples in h of n then the number of samples in the circularly convoluted result y of n will always be maximum of 4 comma 4 that is 4 so we will be having 4 number of samples in the circularly convoluted result this we have already discussed in the previous two sessions now in the step number 2 we will create a matrix and we will write down the samples of x of n so the samples of x of n are 1 3 2 1 now as this is a periodic sequence, so after 1 the next sample will always be equal to 1. So my next sample will be 1. So what we need to do is that we need to write down this sample in this place. And after this sample the next sample will be 1. Then the next sample will be 3 and finally it will be 2. Next we will write down this sample over here that is 2. After that we have next sample which is equal to 1, after that it is 1, then we have 3. Once again I will write down this sample over here. After 3 we have the next sample 2, then 1, then 1. Now as the number of samples are 4 in x of n and h of n, so once we create the 4 cross 4 matrix, we will stop this process. Now we have created a 4 cross 4 matrix. Now we will multiply this 4 cross 4 matrix with the samples of h of n which is 1, 1, minus 1, 1. So the multiplication of this 4 cross 4 matrix with the 4 cross 1 matrix will produce the convoluted result. So let us perform the multiplication. So we will be having 1 into 1 that is 1 plus 1 into 1 that is 1 then 2 into minus 1 that is minus 2 and finally it is 3 the result is 3 next we will multiply the second row with this column and it is 3 plus 1 minus 1 plus 2 and the result is 5 next we will multiply the third row with this column and it is 2 into 1 that is 2 plus 3 minus 1 plus 1 and the result is 3 minus 1 is 2 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5 next the multiplication of last row with this column and that is 1 plus 2 minus 3 plus 1 and the result is 1 so finally the samples of convoluted result y of n will be 3, 5, 5, 1. Let us take one more example where the samples of input and the samples of input response are unequal. So question number 2, we have x of n is equal to let 1, 3, 5, 7 and the samples of h of n is equal to 1, 2, 1. So as you can see, 
the number of samples in x of n samples in x of n is equal to 4 and the number of samples in h of n is equal to 3. So the number of samples in the convoluted result y of n will be maximum of 4 comma 3 that will be equal to 4. But the moment we will determine the circular convolution by the help of matrix method, one thing we need to take care about that is the number of samples in both the sequence must be equal. Now as x of n has 4 number of samples, then just to make 4 samples in h of n, we will simply pad a 0 at the end of the sample. Now we have 4 number of samples in x of n and 4 number of samples in h of n. Now we can perform the matrix multiplication. So I can write down the samples of x of n over here that is 1, 3, 5, 7. Now after that we will write 7 over here, then 1, then 3, then 5. Then we can write 5 over here, then 7, then 1, then 3. Then we can write 3 over here, 5, 7, then 1. Now once we create the 4 cross 4 matrix, we will stop the process here and we will multiply this matrix by the impulse response 1, 2, 1, 0. And we will write down the multiplication result over here which will be my circularly convoluted result y of n. So the result will be 1 into 1 that is 1 plus 14 plus 5 plus 0. So the result is 20. Next 3 into 1 that is 3 plus 2 plus 7 plus 0. The result is 12. Next is 5 plus 6 plus 1 plus 0. The result is 12. Next is 7 plus 10 plus 3 plus 0. And the result is 20. So the samples of convoluted result y of n will be 20, 12, 12 and 20. So we have 4 number of samples in the con circularly convoluted result and that are 20, 12, 12 and 20. So in this way we can determine the circular convolution result by the help of matrix method. So depending on the weightage, if the question is of 2 mark, then we can use the first method that is circular convolution by the help of linear convolution. If the weightage of the question is 8 to 16 mark, then we can go for the second that is graphical method or concentric circle method. Now if the question is of 5 to 8 mark, then we can use the matrix method for determining circular convolution. Now apart from that, if the question is asked specifically for a particular type, then we should use that particular type for the calculation of circular convolution. Now one more very important method is there for determining circular convolution that is called DFT and IDFT method that generally comes in semester examination either of 10 mark or 16 mark that we will discuss in the upcoming lecture. Thank you.